Hi, this is Terry from Tree Marie Soapworks. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this bar. It's a charcoal bar with a gold top. In my last video, I gave you some tips on how to make a smoother bar, and I'm going to continue those tips today at the end of this video. Let's get started. First, I measure my distilled water, and I've been using a third of my water weight in distilled water ice cubes, and this helps it cool down more quickly, and it also helps cut down on the fumes. Then I finish off with the remaining water weight in cold distilled water. Next I measure my sodium hydroxide and then I add that to my lye water and stir it till it's dissolved. After that I measure my sodium lactate and I measure it at a rate of 1 teaspoon per pound of oils. If you're using soap calc to put in your recipes, it's super easy to figure out how much sodium lactate to use just by looking at one number. When you're looking at your soap calc printout, look under the oil section and find the pound section and that will tell you your total pounds. For this recipe, I use 1.675 pounds of oils. So I just round that and make it 1.7 and I use 1.7 teaspoons. So it's as simple as that. And I set these aside in a well ventilated area that's free from any kids or pets. After that, I measure my coconut oil and get that melting, and then I measure my liquid oils, starting with my avocado oil, castor oil, and then my olive oil. Once I finish melting my coconut oil, I add my cocoa butter, and these are cocoa butter's pastilles from Brambleberry. And I stir these until they're melted, and if they don't melt completely, I just microwave them a little bit until they're just barely melted. Now that the lye water is cooled, I just add my sodium lactate and I set it aside for later. Next I add my liquid oils to my melted hard oils. After that I'm adding 1.5 teaspoons per pound of soap of smooth coconut carbon or also called activated charcoal. And I'm using my smooth coconut carbon from Elements Bath & Body today. The reason why I'm adding this to my oils is because I want to make sure and get it completely incorporated before I add my lye water. Because when I add my lye water it'll start to thicken up and I don't want any pieces that aren't completely incorporated. Try and make sure you're not incorporating any air bubbles by inserting your stick blender at an angle and wiggling it a little bit and getting any air bubbles out before you start pulsing your stick blender. Once you're confident that you have all the activated charcoal incorporated, go ahead and strain in your lye solution. I'm using Dark Crystal Fragrance Oil from Brambleberry. This fragrance turns brown in cold process soap and it says that it accelerates slightly but I really didn't notice any acceleration. I really like this scent and I tend to like scents that are kind of masculine and earthy and this one to me reminds me of one that I had from Wholesale Supplies Plus called Sandalwood Patchouli and to me that fragrance didn't smell like sandalwood or patchouli but it really smelled good so this reminds me a lot of that. So thank you very much Brambleberry Brambleberry for sharing this collection with me. When I mix soap that doesn't require any swirling, I usually stick blend it a little bit longer to get a medium trace or so. I'm going to do a textured top on this one, so it needs to get a little bit thicker before I can do that. And I just keep testing it and seeing if it's going to hold the texture or not. So when it's ready, you just start texturing. And I was trying to move the soap to the one side a little more, so I started on one end and I kind of tried to push it over. 
and then just swirl and I swirled like crazy on this one. There is such a thing as swirling too much. You can overwork your soap and your swirls end up a little grainy and I've had that happen to me in the past but this it seemed to let me swirl and swirl and I was trying to get the swirls really to kind of fall back over on themselves so it worked really well in this case with this recipe. If you don't know, I list my supplies and my recipes in the description below my video. And if you don't know how to put these recipes into soap calc, I have two videos on that and I will list those in the description as well. Just in case you're interested, I started a Facebook group also called True Marie Soapworks and it's for asking questions and sharing and it's a closed group so just request to join and I will be leaving a link to that in the description below too. When I finish swirling I add two little foam board spacers and then a sheet of plexiglass and then I cover with plastic wrap. And I force this through gel in my oven. I just use my lowest temperature and I preheat it to that. And then when I set the soap in the oven, I turn the oven off and leave the light on and I just leave it on overnight. And then I turn it off in the morning and I let that come to room temperature naturally. We have a few things to do before we unmold our soap. We are going to make our spray for the top of your soap. And our spray is a ratio of two parts isopropyl alcohol to one part gold mica. I'm using an eighth of a cup, which is two tablespoons of isopropyl alcohol to one tablespoon of gold rush mica. And the gold rush mica is from Elements Bath and Body. And you put those ingredients in your spray bottle and you shake them really well. Get any clumps out before you start to spray. And then you spray it on a piece of scrap cardboard or paper until it's spraying well. And then you spray it on your soap. And you just need to keep turning it around to make sure you get every angle. I made a mask to put over my mold just to catch some of that spray so it doesn't get all over my counter. But this is a lot less messy than sifting your mica on your soap and it sticks a lot better. It just takes a short time for the alcohol to evaporate and you're left with a really nice coating of mica. While you're waiting for your soap top to dry, it's time to clean out the spray pump. You just need to get some warm soapy water and run it through that sprayer until no more mica comes out and then pull the top off and rinse that out and then run some more water through there and then spray all the water out of that and you can replace the lid on your mica bottle. Just don't run any more mica through it or you'll have to clean it out again because it will clog if you don't clean it out. But you can use this again and again until you're out and just add more or make a different color and it works so nicely. I just love the look. Okay, I think you know how to do the rest, so I'm just gonna start in with some more tips about making smooth soap. Last time I gave you three tips, and one was to use sodium lactate, and another one was to soap between the temperatures of 85 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 27 and 35 degrees Celsius. And the other tip I told you was to use a water discount. And what I think some of you aren't understanding about a water discount, you're not really discounting water. You don't need that much water. You only need that water to introduce your lye to your oils. You can use any amount of water as long as it's not lower than the amount of lye that you use. So you can't go lower than a one to one ratio. So when I use this 25% water as a percentage of my oils, it still ends up being a 1.8 to one water to lye. So think about this. 
If you're using the default in soap calc of 38% and you lower it to 25%, you don't have to change the rest of your recipe. It doesn't change your lye or your oils. It just changes how much water has to evaporate out of your soap. If you're scared to do it, I would just decrease your water by a little. Like if you're using 33, go down to 29 and then go down to 25. And I think you'll find that it just solves a lot of problems. Okay, sorry I kind of got off on a rant, but I really wish I would have known that when I was newer to soap making. One thing I should mention about discounting your water in your soap is that it doesn't let your gel phase last as long as when you use full water or even a little bit of a water discount. So what is necessary a lot of times is to force your soap through gel. So that's why I use the oven or a heating pad, but sometimes insulation would just be all you need. But if you don't, a lot of times it just causes partial gel, which makes your soap have the appearance of a ring around the inside of it. So that makes an undesirable look to your soap. There's nothing wrong with it but just that inner part of your soap gelled and it didn't get all the way to the edge. Okay my next tip is just to use a strainer and strain your lye solution. You might already be doing this but if you're not I would suggest that you do just because I think it would help your soap appearance. You don't get all that lint in your soap and also if there's smaller pieces of lye or even bigger pieces it's just to be on the safe side. Okay, my next tip is just to pour down the side of the bowl or the shaft of your stick blender to introduce your lye water and your fragrances to your oils. Just try to minimize the amount of air that gets into your soap. And along those same lines, when you're stick blending, always insert your stick blender at an angle and then kind of try to get that air bubble out of there by wiggling your stick blender before you turn it on. And when you turn it on, make sure it's buried far enough to where it's not going to take in a little air from the top. Another tip that I have is just make sure your soap has traced before you pour it. It can be at an emulsion when you're mixing in your colors and when you're mixing in your fragrance, but make sure when you pour it, it's at an actual trace. Because if it's too thin, sometimes weird things will happen with your texture of your soap. Trace is when your batter is thick enough to pour without separating and if you take a little spoon of it and just kind of drizzle it back in there you can see the trail that you just left and that's when your soap has traced. And there's different stages of trace but you need to at least make sure that it does that. My next tip is to cover your soap after you're done making it and cover your soap so there's not too much headspace. And this is mainly so you don't get soda ash, but also so your top doesn't crack. Because sometimes when the air is cold on the outside and your soap builds up heat on the inside, it causes the soap to crack on the surface just because of the difference in temperature. I leave my soap covered for two days. I think it really has to do with what kind of climate you live in. I think if you live in a more humid climate that this is more necessary. I'm in Indiana and I find that it's humid enough here that I think that's what causes the soda ash and I really find better results when I keep it covered for 48 hours. Now if you're thinking it's too hard to keep it covered for 48 hours, I use a plexiglass cover and then I cover it with plastic wrap so I can still see my soap and I think that just helps me be able to wait that 48 hours because I can still see the soap. This rule doesn't necessarily apply if you're using a soap that has honey or beer or milk in it. This is just for your regular water soaps. Another reason why I wait 48 hours to cut my soap is sometimes when I cut my soap I get little smears and it's the fragrance and then those little smears turn to little pits in the soap. If I let it go for the 48 hours I think it has time to absorb and it doesn't have that problem. Also, if you are cutting with a wire and you are getting little pits when you cut, if you change to using a knife, that actually smears those pits and it completely flattens them out if they're not big air bubbles. If they're just those little tiny air bubbles, cut it with a knife and you won't have those pits. And for my last tip, I would just recommend if you're going for a smooth look to bevel your soap. It gives it that finished look, but also it just feels better in your hands when you're using it. I find when I didn't bubble my soap, I just didn't like that sharp edge when I was using it. 
I hope you found these tips helpful and if you do just give me a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Those of you that placed orders this week, thank you so much and have a great day.